And that's something that that we as star seeds, light workers, you know, whatever word you want to give to it, that's something that we really have to be courageous about. Because so many of us, the work that we're doing and the way that we're doing it, we're not doing it according to old paradigms. Even like the the spiritual coaching industry and all of that, we're not doing it the way they tell us to do it. We're doing it according to our soul's alignment. We're doing it the way our hearts have called us to do it. And so there may not be a template for how to do it. There may not be a successful model that shows sustainability. We're the ones creating that. And we need to have tremendous amount of courage and trust in order to move forward with that. Welcome to the Trinity Show. This is a new idea I've had. I've, I've done a couple of interviews before, as you, as you probably know. Um, no, the names, the names evade me at the minute. But if, you, if you've been a follower of my channel for a while, you know I've done a couple of interviews. But, and I've always wanted to get this going. I've wanted to do this for a long time. And now is the, the right time. And um, even though I've had a tough day the last few days like processing a lot of stuff I, I like know like now's the time like it's even synchronizing up even, even in my challenging days so so welcome guys and so me, me and Susie have only just met um we only just quickly introduced so we, we thought we'd just dive straight in so we could sort of get to know each other with you guys at the same time and just sort of play it like this so it's an interesting setup it's all a bit of a um ha hash together from my end like just like go with the flow and we're doing it on zoom zoom's pretty good so it should come out looking pretty good hopefully i've just got it recording who knows what it'll come out like hopefully it'll come out in the right because you don't quite know I i've used zoom before and i remember you don't quite i can't i'm not quite sure what format it's going to come out in hopefully zoom will just like pick it up and hopefully it's on speaker pickup view and we'll just go with the flow and synchronicity hopefully life's looking at us so welcome Susie thank you so much for coming on the first episode of the Trinity show and uh, oh, cool. the first episode well thanks for having me you're welcome yeah yeah it's, it's all sort of come together just very quickly and um, I just put the note out on Facebook and you along with a few others uh, responded and I, I know I know you I know we don't know each other personally I think we have chatted on Facebook a few times over, over just the comments and I know I know your work as I, I've seen you channeling Prime Creator so so I don't know if you've seen have you seen any of my channelings I have not I don't watch other channelings at all uh, yeah <laughs> yeah that's great because I'm a bit the same I don't watch other channelings either but it's a, but I have seen a few clips of yours I, I tend to just check people out so yeah, so is there anything you'd like to talk about? I mean, really the idea of this interview is to give you an opportunity to be yourself. And like my, my goal, I mean, we should come to a collective goal, I guess. But from my idea is that um, I, I just want to give you an opportunity to speak your truth, you know, speak your deepest message that you want to share with the world. And so... So, so I, either I can be like um, some cool talk show host who, who like tries to get in there somehow, or, or I can just just ask you to do that at the start and like skip that thing as I'm not an experienced talk show host. So, so is is a is there some what what would you like to share with um, my, my community, my my YouTube community? Yeah, well, thank you, Trinity. My my biggest message and my greatest passion is giving people the freedom to let themselves shine to let themselves be themselves, to uh, not be afraid to speak their truth and to share their message, and to let people know that they're powerful. And we've come together here on this planet to be powerful together and to change the paradigm and to shift what's happening on this planet. And so many people are just stuck in the old paradigm. They're maybe stuck in their jobs because they don't feel secure enough internally to break away from something that they don't like or they're stuck in their lifestyle or they're stuck in their family or a relationship or whatever it is and my message really is to free yourself and to remember 
who you are and why you came to this planet in the first place. You don't have to go with the status quo. You don't have to go with the flow of everyone else. You have your own flow. You have your own mission. You have your own soul energy that's different from anybody else. And it's unique and it's special and it's why you're here. And so my call is always to remember step forth into who you are and to why you came to this planet in the first place and shine shine who you are let it be powerful well i'm i'm, I'm so happy you shared that with us um susie because i know i know it's enormous synchronicity coming into alignment here like 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 when i was out in the pouring rain hiding under a tree processing my stuff at 7 a.m this morning I, I, I was, I, I was, I was thinking, right, I know, I'm sure what's happening now is something to do synchronistically. I can see it lining up, you know, how, how my trigger over the last few days is bound to be connected to the topic coming up. And of course it was, I see how it is now. It was basically, I, I it was, it's, it was my father's birthday. So I've just been to my parents and, and basically my mother triggered me. <laughs> Uh, basically about this exact subject it, it, it basically what I identified it to was my, my mother worrying about me she's like seeing me go out she, she, you know because she's very supportive she's they're much more supportive than a lot of families and they do support me but she's getting to the point now where in a way she's a mirror I know she's a mirror of my own fears because I'm actually at a crux point in my life now where I'm literally I've identified my calling like 99% and I'm like, right, it's time to go. And I've got like all these websites and all these projects like a few days away from launching and all my stuff's coming up, all my fears, insecurities, are people gonna judge me? Or are they gonna reject me? Am I gonna get zero signups? <laughs> Is, and, 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 and those fears and insecurities about people rejecting me and also the fear of not manifesting the money because today's rent day and, I've, and luckily I've had to have a discussion with my landlord basically because I'm shifting jobs from my old career to my new career. So my landlord was very kind and I got on great with him so it all went smoothly of course, <laughs> as it always does. But it's bringing up all my fears and so so see my parents last night and sort of reflect it I guess obviously reflecting those fears back to me and obviously a mother's fear about her son like going out on some crazy venture on like interdimensional starships to to make a career and a living she's like okay she, she I think because I've like um she's seeing I, I'm like really going into this now she's like panicking as she's seeing the reality of it and she said she, she just basically asked me if it was sustainable my because last time it wasn't because last time i was living in glastonbury and I, I i sustained it for four months like doing this channeling full time and i burnt out and i ended up saying mom mom can i come and move back in <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. and, and so i did and so i moved back to lincolnshire and and now like i've i've been moved out again like for about eight months something like since march and like so so now saying like mom i'm going out on this venture again this is my calling and she's like she all she said was is this sustainable and she well she did get a bit nosy like where's your money come from <laughs> you know and and that well, of course of course parents are going to want to know those things partly because they are your parents and they're looking out for you and partly because they have fear and that's normal and natural and our job as the people who are pioneers and moving on to the front lines with this kind of work, our job is to stay centered in trust, that we know that what we're doing and what we're bringing forward is something that's valuable and something that's going to support us. And it doesn't always look that way, it doesn't always feel that way, but when you look back over your life, you can see how supported you've been. And that's something that, that we as, star seeds light workers you know whatever word you want to give to it that's something that we really have to be courageous about because so many of us the work that we're doing and the way that we're doing it we're not doing it according to old paradigms even like the the spiritual coaching industry and all of that we're not doing it the way they tell us to do it we're doing it according to our soul's alignment we're doing it the way our hearts have called us to do it. And so there may not be a template for how to do it. There may not be a successful model that shows sustainability. We're the ones creating that. And we need to have tremendous amount of courage and trust in order to move forward with that. 
and I'll sh <laughs> I'll share uh, something that happened with my parents recently. I went to to see them for two weeks. I went for a visit, and in the middle of the visit, my soul said, "We need to have a chat about our mission." And I I listen to my soul. I do what it says, and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> have we done that already? We really have to do this again." <laughs> Okay, fine. And and my parents agreed to it. Now, to give a bit of context, uh, I grew up Mennonite, which is part of the Christian religion. So they're, you know, Bible-based. Uh, Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's their belief system, just to give a, a context. So I sat down with them, and what was really happening in that conversation was not so much a conversation about my mission. It was my cellular trauma was facing the people who have killed me every lifetime for doing this mission. In other words, I was facing the church. That's what my parents represent. And my cellular trauma was coming to the surface to heal so that I no longer have to care about what my parents think of my mission so that that no longer has uh can hold me back in any way so, so do, do you think this is when you say cellular trauma do you yeah. mean like you've had a past life as like a, a like a like a wiccan like a, a witch as a pagan yeah okay, great yeah thank you for asking that question trinity uh i have my understanding of cellular trauma is that the cells of our body hold memories of other lifetimes it can be positive, it can be negative. The cellular trauma obviously is negative. And in my experience, the trauma is around being killed for living my soul mission. So whether I was a witch or a medicine woman or an oracle or you know whatever, every time I've been killed for that. And so it's been very scary to put myself out there because my cellular trauma says, oh, don't get too big, you'll get killed again. <laughs> Don't get too loud, you'll get killed again. Don't let too many people find you, you'll get killed again. You know, that's unconsciously, that's what my cellular trauma has been saying. And so when I sat with my parents and faced that head on, it was literally like sitting in front of the people who had killed me every time and saying to them, no, you won't kill me again this is my mission. This is what I'm here to do. And this lifetime, I'm going to execute it. And you're not going to be able to stop me like you did in the past. And you're not going to be able to harm me in any way. And so that was very powerful, facing my fear at that level. And then also freeing my parents. You don't have to worry about me. I'm taken care of. You don't have to take responsibility for me as your daughter. I take full responsibility of my life and allowing them to be on their path in the way that they choose. Mm. And something I've noticed in this situation in, in, in myself is like creating that barrier and, and like, I sometimes call this, um, this is something I've been researching a lot, um, standing in my divine feminine. Because when we can create that barrier from love, that, that's like correct. Like it's like, you know, if it's coming from pure love, pure service to all, the one, including your family, like, like mom, dad, you've got to shut up just, just this time because honestly you're wrong. Like, you're, you know, if it can truly come from love, it's, it's good. But of course, that, that barrier, you know, putting the barrier up and saying, mum, dad, no, 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 you overstepped it this time, I've got to do this. You know, that barrier, that can turn to anger, you know, quite easily, can't it? Especially if you've had like trigger patterns in your childhood and that. So, so how, how do we walk this fine line between setting up strong, powerful barriers, which can be very aggressive even from pure love, and then, you know, uh, you know, love can be very strong, not aggressive, but love can be powerful. And how, but how do we walk that, this fine line between being strong in our love, feminine confidence, but not letting that slip into like anger and 
Well, I think you just said it, didn't you? You said being strong in your love and your confidence. I don't, it has not been my experience that setting up a healthy boundary um, turns, is an aggressive thing or turns into anger. That's not my experience. Um, my experience is I've made a decision early on in my awakening that I would relate to people who don't understand me from a place of love. So for the example with my parents, I said from the very beginning, I accept your path. You're not wrong. You're right on your path. This, this is yours and it's right for you. It's not right for me. And just standing very strong in that knowing and then just loving them, just offering them my love. You don't have to agree with me. It's okay. And coming from a place, I think, even of supporting them on their, on their path has made a huge difference. Uh, my parents don't really tend to trigger me that much because I set up that place within my heart that says, I honor your path and I honor you and your choices. And I don't think you're wrong in your choices. They're just not for me. And so we have a very amicable relationship. We have a very loving relationship. Um, my triggers tend to come from other places. So <laughs> with, with my parents, um, that decision, I love you and I support you on your path, even though it's different than mine. I think one mistake that a lot of people make when they first awaken is that everyone else needs to see what they see, know what they know, experience what they've just experienced. And then it turns into dogma and it turns into religion. And that's not what the spiritual path is about. The spiritual path is about accepting everyone where they are on their path, accepting their choice, accepting their path, even when and especially when it's not the same as yours. And I think that's something that people early in their awakening really need to realize just because it's new for you and you may not feel confident or secure in it yet, that doesn't mean that you have to convert those around you to make yourself feel better about what you've just chosen or what you've just experienced. And that's massive because that really shifts the energy when you accept your path and your choices and you accept the path of others and their choices when they're different from each other. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so I've been starting to have these realizations of how, I guess it's like Bashar says, all truths are true. So like, you know, even if someone believes that ETs don't exist and they're not visiting earth, they're actually correct because they're living in their own vibrational reality and, and, and they can't actually see the ETs and the UFOs because they're not in that frequency and they don't believe what we're talking about. So, so they'll just end up shifting to, a, I assume, to a parallel reality where the ETs don't actually land. So, so, so they're actually correct, even though to the ego mind, you might, you might say, what the ETs are? I saw one last night, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? But, but they're actually true. So, so is this the kind of thing you're, you're speaking of? Um, yes, yes, in a way, everyone's going to have their different lens of reality. Everyone's going to have their different understanding about what's actually happening on the planet. Everyone's going to have a different perception of what they see and how they see things. And it's our job, as those of us who are on the awakening path, it's our job not to convert them into a different way, but to allow them to have their experience and to model for them what it's like to be loving, what it's like to be accepting. And that may be just the awakening that they need to say, oh, wait a second, actually, I like that way better. And they might mm. actually want to experience yeah. what we're demonstrating. Yeah. And that's the secret, of course, because when you're trying to force your mum and dad to, to come on, mum and dad, look at this path. They're like, no, no. But when you, if you can be really subtle about it and just sort of very subtly show them the possibilities of following it, that, that's, you know, that's when they're much more likely to actually pay attention to the information. Yeah. And, and that comes with maturity, you know, that comes with maturity. Mm. There, is, there is an ability for people who have 
a level of maturity to say, it's okay for me to have my way and for you to have your way. It's, it's an immature thing to say, you have to do it the way I do it. That's, that's not how life works. And that's not why we came here either. We came here to, with different belief systems and different perceptions. We came here to have different experiences. That's the spice of life. That's what makes life fun and exciting. Oh, I never thought about it in that way. Yeah, I like to hear how you explain it. Mm. That gives me new ideas. Instead of saying, no, I'm right. Everything that I say is right. Like, that's not how life is, is it? No. And I, I think that's a great segue because we, we've been talking about a lot of the shadow aspects and the, and the difficult aspects of being, being a star seed or a, a spiritual seeker or someone trying to aspire to following their heart's intent and their calling and their highest dreams. But what, what like we see is what we've been talking about today, a lot of um, difficult challenges come, in, come up in that way. And so one of the things you were talking about, like how like always staying open to op other people's points of view, like it's like we all know it's easier said than done like like because because like i've just been processing this the other day like i, I noticed my e own ego come up you know like someone has an opposing point of view to something you strongly believe and you you, you remind them no that's wrong that's wrong and i'm like hmm, wait there i think that's my ego <laughs> and so 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 what i'd like to ask you to, to get to like like this place where we can you know be compassionate to our parents and embrace their points of view and like and get to and get mature enough to like nurture and embrace others on this path it seems we need a certain amount in some form of what we might call shadow work it's something for, for me I had like these big awakening experiences in 2009 and then around 2013 I was like yeah I'm nearly enlightened and then by the end of 2013 all my shadow was coming to the surface <laughs> it was like I had this honeymoon period you know like where I was just in peace joy and then and then literally something I mean, I could, I could pinpoint it, but it involves another person, so I won't speak about it personally, but it's something that activated my shadow, my trigger, my pain body, and it came to the surface. And I've really been through a process of like, well, where are we now? We're nearly 2020, and it was 2013, and like, I feel I'm coming to the end of it, but like we're saying, I, I got triggered just the last few days. So, so, so yeah, so what I'd like to ask you, Susie, is... Um, there's so many different one things I've explored on my journey is uh, I've always been observing is the different paths to shadow healing. So as I'm sure you've um, seen yourself on your own journey, there's so many different perspectives to healing these out of alignment shadow aspects to ourselves and very conflicting and must be very confusing to a new seeker to the path. Like, like some teachings will say, you know, just, do things to raise your frequency all the time, like traditionally, like mantra, like you're doing mantra, 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 raise your frequency, take your energy up into the higher chakras and just keep going up, up and keep focusing on the highest and like, like don't pay any attention to the negative frequencies and they will transmute over time naturally, just keep focusing on the highest. And then at the other end of the scale, you've got, you know, these very um, sort of like, um, I, I don't know what you'd call it, embodiment teachings where, it's very much about spend, setting yourself aside time each day to, to, to let any shadow come to the surface and embrace it with love and just sit with it and not resist it, not resist it, just let it be there, I guess, like acceptance. And so these teachings can appear to be very conflicting, like some teachings are saying acceptance, acceptance is the way, and other teachings are saying like um, transcendence, you know, to go into the higher states and let, so, so, so I'd just like to ask you really, what's your perspective from, from your own work on yourself and with your clients on what is the most effective methods for healing the shadow within ourselves? Yeah, the most effective method is what resonates with you at the time. So you will go through phases in your awakening journey where there will be times where you will need to go down into the depths and really feel what you're feeling and allow those emotions to flow through and go through your grief and go through your anger and integrate all of those lower vibrating emotions. You will, you will go through those phases. There will be phases where that's not the best way to approach what's happening because if you keep going that direction, you can wallow and get stuck in that. 
Mm. And so you want to focus on uh, transmuting. You want to focus on building your higher frequency. You want to focus on just being present and not having to go down into the depth. And so it, it takes a lot of awareness and it is helpful to have a guide or a mentor, someone to walk you through that, uh, to give an outside perspective because it is easy to get stuck on one side or the other. Like I'm just going to focus on being positive and I'm just going to, you know, be in my gratitude and I'm only going to uh, pay attention to the things that feel good. And I'm going to follow my highest excitement and, and, that can be valuable, but if you only do that side of it, it can be very dangerous. And the same with looking at the, the negative emotions, going down into the depths, feeling the anger, the sorrow, the grief, that can be very, very valuable. That's essential that you integrate all emotional parts of yourself. That's essential to the path. But if you let yourself get stuck in that, if you only do that side of it, it's very unbalanced. And so sometimes you'll do both at the same time. You'll focus on your frequency. You'll uh, work with integrating your emotions. And sometimes it's going to be a little bit more than what, you know, a little bit more one sided. And your role is to recognize where you are and what's needed. And that's why I say it's helpful to, um, sometimes to have a guide or a mentor to be a reflector for you about what's happening inside of yourself and to say, you know what, you've processed a lot. You need to now take a rest from that, rebuild yourself, focus on, you know, what's the good things that are happening in your life. And it, it can be very, very helpful to have someone like that looking out for you in that way, because we don't, when we're in the midst of it, we don't always have the precise clarity, you know, we don't, we don't always, let's be honest, when we're in the midst of it, it's so helpful to have some that we can turn to and say, hey, am I on the right track here? Do I need to make mm -hmm. a big adjustment, a minor adjustment? You know, can you give me some feedback? And, and I've had a mentor in my own life for 15 years now, and he's been invaluable. And I'm so, so grateful and blessed that I have him. I would not be where I am today without his guidance and to be clear when i talk about a guide and, or a mentor i'm talking about someone who brings you back to yourself and not someone who imposes their belief system on you or who projects what they think is best for you but someone who teaches you how to discover that within yourself and that does take time that is a journey and a practice yeah just like finding a teacher who can like um you know always support you in your path you know like like in my example i had a hindu teacher and she always supported me in my like et path even though she had no idea really what i was talking about and because she could see it was my path and but she she was i, I can see now looking back i should have spent more time with her because she was a true mentor <laughs> and like my, my ego was like no i'm on my own path i don't know this and but it can i remember her 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 husband once saying um because of course they call it a guru in Hinduism. If you have a guru, you can just ask your guru and get the answer straight away. You don't have to go through months of processing or working it out. He said, why don't you just get a teacher and like ask them and get it sorted out like that? <laughs> yeah, you can do that. And that's helpful at certain phases of the path. But if you do that, you never develop the discernment. You never de develop the muscles for being able to look within. And that is also a very, um, a place of fine balance and navigation because there, there is the ego that says, I can find all the answers within. I don't need anybody else. I know everything. It's, it's all within. All I need to do is, you know, go within. That's valuable and that's powerful, but it's not always the case. We came here to help each other. We came here to be in community. We came here to learn from each other. And so it's okay to ask hey, what is your perception of this situation that I'm going through? And then your job is to tune in and say, does their answer resonate with, with my truth of my soul and the truth of my heart? And discern that. But to always 
just only go within, that can become very unbalanced. You can become very closed and very narrow-minded doing that. And by the same token, if you're always asking your mentor, if you're clinging on their every word, if you're totally externalized and not evaluating your own inner truth, then that can become very dangerous as well because you never develop the muscle and the skill to know what you feel and what you think and what your soul has to say to you. Mm. And, and so nice segue there. I wasn't quite sure where to go next. And you just said it in the last, last words, where, what your soul has to say to you. And I'm like, yeah, there we can go that way. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what would you say are the best techniques for other star seeds or you know anyone on this path who wants to find their mission, their calling, their purpose, their excitement, their passion, whatever we might call it? Um, I, I was thinking about this earlier, like we have a few techniques, like we can like follow our highest excitement moment to moment, so begin to tune into our calling that way. We can meditate and if we're like quite psychic and get downloads and literally get visions and images and like um, literally get told in some instances we're very psychic. And, or there's like, like the idea of sort of once you've got a general understanding of your calling, you can just wake up every morning and just say like, I'm going to serve humanity today from this perspective. This is my calling. I'm going to serve to the best of my ability. But what, how, how do you align with your calling? And perhaps how did you initially as a child? And also how can you, how would you recommend others can align with their calling? Okay. All right. There's a lot of questions in that one question. Yeah, sorry. So, um, <laughs> you may have to ask some of them again if I yeah. don't address them in this one shot. Um, to preface what I'm about to say, I specialize in working with people who are very sensitive, people who are empaths and have what I call an open nervous system where they feel everything. They have many channels open in the higher chakras. They are very um, sensitive and attuned to those around them, to their environment. And so what we need to do first is to get you back with your energy because most sensitive beings are not truly with their own energy. They're with the people around them or their pets or the house that they live in or the land where they live. They're tuning into all these different things, but themselves. And so the first thing we need to do is get you back with your own energy. So Trinity, if you want me to, I'll take you through just a brief activation to get people back with their own energy. Okay, so this is the foundation and then my work expands from there, but this is where we start. So what I'll do is I'll just invite you to close your eyes and just begin breathing deeply through your belly. And bring yourself into presence with this moment. We're going to ask that your soul, the essence and energy of your soul, be made known to you now. How does it feel to connect with the energy and essence of my soul? These are questions, I'm going to give you a series of questions now that you're going to ask yourself. How does it feel to connect with the essence and energy of my soul? Take a deep breath. How does it feel for my soul, essence, and energy to be activated in this human body? Take a deep breath. How does it feel for the essence and energy of my soul to begin flowing through my body? How does it feel to know the energy of my soul? How does it feel to sense the energy of my soul? How does it feel to experience the essence of my soul? 
the truest and purest part of who I am, how does it feel to experience the essence of my soul? How does it feel for my soul essence and energy to nourish my brain and my nervous system? How does it feel for my soul essence to replace all other energies in my body, all energies that are not mine now being replaced with my soul essence and energy? How does it feel for my soul essence to activate my DNA? How does it feel for my soul essence and energy to activate my brain? How does it feel for my life to flow into alignment with my soul mission? And then that's where we would begin to do a lot more work because as soon as I ask that question, I can feel even, even though we're not on the replay yet, I can feel a lot of dissonance in the field. Um, people don't know what it is to live a life in alignment with their soul mission. This is a generalization, of course. Uh, so that's a great question, uh, especially this audience here that I can feel into. That's a great question to ask yourself. How does it feel to live my life in alignment with my soul energy, my soul mission? And the more you ask yourself those types of questions that I just gave you, the more you'll begin to feel, the more you'll begin to open up the channels of the, your soul flowing through your human body and your energy field. The more you ask those questions, the more you summon forth your soul essence and energy to be expressed through you. And so one of the things that I do is I ask those questions every day. And I ask myself in the morning when I wake up, I talk to my soul and I'm like, how do you want to express through me today? And today, uh, today this morning, my soul wanted to express with joy and power, I think it was. I'm trying to remember now exactly. <laughs> I don't always remember what it says, to be fair. Um, but that's something that I do every day. And it's a great practice when you go into a grocery store or when you're driving in heavy traffic or when you're visiting a friend or family member that is challenging. Uh, bring the energy back to feeling you instead of feeling all of the stuff outside of you because it feels good to be with your essence. It feels so good to be with your soul energy. It really feels nourishing, it feels pure, it feels true, it feels alive. And you can enter your own you know, descriptive word in there, but it feels so amazing to be with your true essence. You don't have to feel all the stuff around you, you can feel you. And that is the most powerful thing that you can do as an empath and as a sensitive being, is bring your energy back to yourself and tune into your field, your energy, your soul, instead of tuning into the external. Did I answer, uh, I think there was a question about my childhood. I don't remember that question. Oh, oh yeah, it was, um, it, it was just really, how did you connect with your calling? Did, did you know, did you like sense into this as a child or um, completely not, or? Well, uh, growing up in a Christian family, I was very sheltered, uh, didn't have a lot of exposure to secular society, didn't have a lot of exposure to the outside world. Um, my exposure was the Christian school that I went to, my family, the church. That's what I knew. So my understanding at that time was dedicating my life to Christ dedicating my life to God. And I can remember at least two, if not three distinct times where I accepted Jesus into my heart and dedicated myself in service to God. And I believe that 
Well, I know I had, I was very spiritually connected, but I didn't know it at the time. I didn't really understand what that was, what that meant in the way that I understand it now. But I believe that, yes, even as a four-year-old, a five-year-old, I knew there was something beyond myself that I was meant to be in service to. And that's why I did dedicate my life to Christ at that young age, because there was a knowing within me that, yes, there is something, there is something greater than me. And I, and I'm going to serve that. And I, you know, obviously interpreted that as God at the time, or as Jesus Christ. Now I know it's a, it's a much more expansive picture than that. Um, but I was, I was in tune as a child in a different way. Mm. Yeah. You just didn't have the framework or the clarity to be able to fully sync up with your, your path at the time. Yeah, I didn't have the, I didn't have the clarity. Again, my understanding was heaven, hell, the way to get to heaven is by accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. You want to go to heaven. That's the goal. <laughs> you, you know, you have this life on this earth, but really the ultimate goal is to get to heaven. Now I can see that the ultimate goal is to be here on this planet and bring all those heavenly energies here to restore heaven on earth here on this planet. And we can't do that unless we take human form and there's no heaven that we're going to after this. This is it right here. We're meant to create it here, not to just live a life and then, you know, have this ultimate heavenly experience forever and ever. We're meant to bring heaven here. Mm. And, and aren't we lucky that, that we did have uh, Christianity, you know, e even though it did get filtered down to us, you know, after 2000 years and, you know, not at its original pure teachings, but, you know, mm -hmm. You know, like, like my mother's a follower of Christianity and it has served her well, you know what I mean? It's given her a framework that's helped her and d developed yeah. a very sort of spiritual, um, conscious, you know, service to others ideology on life, which are ultimately is the most important thing. And so I guess we could segue here into the, the idea that, you know, Christ, you know, so, suffered for humanity's sins i guess i guess i guess as we all do you know when when we're doing like um our spiritual work and it's just getting really intense and we, we, we want to carry on because we know it's serving others and even ourselves but it just gets so intense you know we, we do all suffer for humanity's sins at some point humanity being our greater self and so so christ and of course all, all, all of us the, the the goal of this idea of service i guess is to to gain the momentum of love light energy on earth towards uh, towards a better reality towards a better civilization towards what we might call like you know an aquarian age love light golden age fourth density fifth dimensional you know unity consciousness enlightened civilization and so so this, so this is a bit of a big question and I, I don't expect you to have the answer on how, you, how we're going to save the planet all by yourself. But um, so, 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 so of course we got this idea and I, I'm, sure, I, I'm sure, I assume you'd agree that like, like really the best way that we can work individually is to, uh, is to follow everything we've been talking about in this call, you know, aligning with our calling and then, the, you know, when we're all of service to the one and to ourself and to the higher, you know, that this is our, our fastest path, you know, to creating that new age, you know, this is what we're here to do, you know, our soul's guidance is the guidance of how we create this new reality. And so would you, would you agree with that? Just quick. Um, y yes. Um, I'm eager to hear the question though, because I think there's more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I just wanted to check. I assume we were sort of synced up on that idea. I just thought I'd not make an assumptions, but yeah. But the question is, so, 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 so I guess the fastest way to create that reality is for us all to get aligned with our calling, our mission, our purpose, like like everything we've been talking about in this call. But, but I, I, I know some of us are talking about this, and perhaps you could talk a little about this as well. I, I've sort of 
a few people, including myself, have seen a timeline. For myself, I've seen it, I just like denoted 2036 as a significant point where we should really be seeing this new civilization beginning to manifest significantly in physical reality. You know, a, a more like a unified consciousness moving towards one unified goal of creating a love light reality. And, and so, so I guess my two questions are, so, so around this time period of 2036 that a few people are pointing to as, as a significant point, question one, how do you see a reality, our Earth, around 2036? And question two, um, how, how do we actually do that? You know, do, do, can you share some of the more, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. So, um, I don't subscribe to 2036. I subscribe to right now. I subscribe to let's get our crap together right now. Let's create community in whatever way we can right now. The, I'm not um, shaming the people who put dates out there, but one of the dangers of clinging to a date is subconsciously, oh, we can put it off for a while because it's not here yet subconsciously, oh, I don't have to take full responsibility right now or yet because that's so far away. There are subconscious things that happened that happen in our mind and in our being when we attach to a date. And I think that's dangerous. And I think it's not the way we need to approach what we're doing because we need to, like what you're doing right now, Trinity, with taking this uh, YouTube show and you're saying, okay, I'm doing this now. That's what we all need to be doing. What is it that our soul is calling us to? Step into that as fully and as powerfully as you can right now. Don't wait until some future time. Because again, subconsciously, it's like, well, okay, that's going to happen then. And somehow magically, that's going to all come together. And I just need to show up then and and do my part then no you need to fully step into who you came to be on this planet why you're here you need to fully step into that now and start executing those plans and we can move the timeline it can be sooner than 2036 if we all do that you see what i'm saying we <laughs> so again no shame for the people who are putting those dates out there it's that's not what i'm trying to do here what i'm trying to do is to call you into your power now and say in 2020 we're going to have communities springing up around the world in 2025 we're going to have communities springing up within the world we're working on plans for that right now and it's not just creating the business plan and creating those models on paper, but it's also in our day-to-day -day interpersonal relationships. How do we treat each other? How do we communicate with each other? How do we come into a frequency together? Because we have these utopian ideals and dreams, but to be honest, most of us can't sustain long-term relationships because we don't have the maturity and the skills for communicating for confronting our triggers, for working through our stuff together, together. I can work, for example, if I'm triggered by a friend, I can work that out on my own with or without my friend. But you know what's powerful? When my friend is willing to also work out their trigger with me. Now we've established a trust together that if something when something goes wrong, because let's face it, no one's perfect, life isn't perfect. When shit hits the fan, we can confront it and face it together. And even if we don't agree with each other, or even if we don't, or even if we have a different perspective, we can come together and face it together. And that's what we need to be working on right now. How are we going to set up, how are we going to set up sustainable community if we can't in our families within our relationships and friendships and partnerships if we can't work out the challenging stuff and it's amazing trinity i i live here in sedona and this is one of the places that's touted as a spiritual mecca on planet earth and the people that live here 
I see it time and time again. We can't get along with each other. It, it blows my mind and I'm not perfect. I have my faults, I'm not perfect. But I know how to confront things. I know how to have uncomfortable conversations. And that's a skill that we need to develop with each other if we want something like 2036 to happen, you know? If we, if we want our utopian communities and if we want a change on the way things are done here on planet Earth, it starts with us. And, it, and it's not about making the grand business plan. That's important. But what it's about is our relationships with each other that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. If we have a falling out with someone, we need to learn how to work through that and come back together and not just let that person go from our lives because they don't serve my path or they're not in resonance with me. No, that's not how it works. We need to learn how to be with people who don't resonate at our frequency. We need to learn how to be with people who have a different way of expressing in the world. And I don't know what it's like other places around the planet, but what I see here is a lot of people just letting people go from their life left and right because they don't serve my path. They don't resonate with, you know, we don't resonate with each other. We've, we're complete now. And, and that can happen. You don't get me wrong. That can happen. And that's legitimate. But um, it happens a little too frequently, in my opinion, mm. where people, just, <laughs> people go from their life instead of actually confronting things and, and working things out together. Yeah, it's, it seems as a species, we we seem, particularly at present, we seem to be get very polarized. Like, you know, like 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 one, like if we're if we're a person who's like very, you know, doesn't have boundaries and gets walked over left, right, and centre by everyone, and then then all of a uh, of a sudden we we discover that, you know, the ways to have boundaries. All of a sudden we're like, no, everyone stay out. I've got my boundaries. No, get out. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're. Wrong. <laughs> And it's like we seem to get so polarized, don't we, as humans? Yeah, especially with the invention of social media. It's easy to say what you think about something when you're not, you know, face to face with a person and you don't have to confront them directly. You can just mm -hmm. drop something in a comment yeah. and have an argument online, but it's not really confronting the true issue, is it? So we have in some ways lost our communication skills and think that we can say whatever we want and get away with it or think that we don't have to confront what's really going on. I mean, look at the recent situation with uh, Greta and the, the things she's saying about climate change and you have people over on this side that climate change is real, it's happening, why are you demonizing this girl? Why, you know, she has a voice. And then you have people on the other side who are saying, you know, she, this, this Greta girl has a handler and climate change is false and it's not happening and it's all orchestrated by um, the, the governments and people doing the ge geoengineering. And, and there's this gigantic polarity. Mm. <laughs> and what's happening is people are taking sides and taking a stand instead of coming together and exploring. Is there something underneath this? Do we need to look a little deeper? Do we need to have real conversations together? But instead, this person takes this side, this person takes that side, and now suddenly, people who once loved and respected each other are now in dissonance and rejecting each other. And that, that's not okay. We need to be able to have difficult conversations. Well, I believe this. I honor your belief and I believe this. Well, why do you believe this? Well, because this and this and this. Oh, okay. Well, I can see your point of view. I still don't agree, but I could see where you're coming from. You know, we don't have those conversations online. Mm. Do we? I mean, I don't see it. Even <laughs> it's, it's I have 
Donald, Donald, Donald Trump is God. Donald Trump's the devil. Donald Trump's right. God. Donald Trump's the devil. Donald Trump's God. <laughs> it goes more like that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's like, can we find a place of neutrality? Can we find a place where we're observing? Can, we're, can we find a place where we're seeking to understand rather than jumping to conclusions or jumping to judgment? I would love to say yes, but I don't see it happening very often. Mm. And I have a lot of, you know, awakened, intelligent people on my Facebook. Yeah, yeah, this is what's scary. <laughs> like, like, it's even, it's the conscious community and the most polarized. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm. And I do believe, I do believe that I can come together in community with people who don't have my exact belief systems my perceptions, my understandings. In fact, I wouldn't want to be in a community with people who only saw things exactly as I did. How boring would that be? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I mean, I'm sure if we got together, we, we'd find that we had an extreme amount of conflicting views and <laughs> quite, quite possibly. Yeah, because it's just, it's just the nature of reality, isn't it? You know, I'm a, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, so we, we seem to have come to a natural end. I, I could take this conversation in many ways for many hours, but um, I, th I think it seems about a natural place to beautiful to, um, wind up. So, so thank you so much, Susie. It's been um, fascinating. I think we've hit on some really important topics, and um, I, I hope this video really gets out there to um, to a, a thousand people. <laughs> Or more. Yeah, or more, or more, yeah. <laughs> Trinity, could I share real briefly about the Creation Temple and what we're doing there? Of course, of course, yes. So the Creation Temple is an online membership website, and that's a community that I've created, and we've been going strong for almost three years now. We'll have our anniversary. Well, it's October 1st. It's been three years. <laughs> I, I remember when you created that. I remember when it, when it came out, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's wild. It blows my mind that we've been doing it for three years. And even though we're not in person, you know, geographically, we're gathering together every week via video. And what I've come to understand is that even though we have different viewpoints and different understandings, we can still come together in love as a soul family, as a community. I have a few members with me still that started at the very beginning that are still part of it. And that says to me that we can work together despite any differences that we have. And every week when we get together, we're doing a meditation or we're doing an activation together or we're doing uh, some channeling where people get direct personal messages from Prime Creator. So it's really an opportunity for people to get the support and help they need on the spiritual path because I understand the nuances of, of the energy of the spiritual path and how that works. And I guide people through that. And we've created this tremendous quantum field that's a service for the collective. And this is really where my, my heart just bubbles up with joy because to be able to meet together every week and to see each other and get to know each other and do these meditations and activations together the energy from that has built and built and built over three years time. And we're now stepping out. We've decided together, actually yesterday, we decided together we're going to step out in greater service for the collective. And so people are not only going to be able to receive the energetics of what we are doing together, maybe once a month, people will be able to come into those video gatherings with us. And I've never, I've never opened it up like this before for the public, but we are going to, uh, this Saturday, Saturday, October 5th, we're going to have an open Creation Temple gathering where anybody from around the world can come. It will be at 10 a.m. Pacific, one o'clock Eastern. You'll have to translate for your time zone in the UK, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that's what, I think that would translate to my, um... To my six o'clock time when I try and do everything, okay. so maybe I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're welcome to come. So those who want to come, 
Um, you can private message me for a link. You can uh, get the link by contacting me at creationtemple.com slash contact. Oh, we should, a, we should be able to put it in the um, video box below. Ch I, uh, yeah, yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, YouTube has no problem with that. So we'll, we'll put all the links in the, in the video box below, guys. So Beautiful. Thank you, Trinity. Yeah, that would be easy. And we're going to do an activation with you this Saturday. So I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet, but one of our members is going to do a light language activation and uh, there, it will be powerful, I'm sure, because it always is. So join us. It's free or by donation. You can, you can just join us. And we've never done this before, but I'm so grateful to my Master Creator members for stepping up in service in this way, for opening this up for everyone. This is really special. Yeah, so, and, and your website is uh, su suzybellia.com? Yeah, there's two, creationtemple.com and suzybeiler.com, S-U-S-I-E-B-E-I-L-E-R. Great. Apologies for pronouncing it wrong. No worries. Most people do. <laughs> Not a big deal. So, is there anything else you'd like to share with um, my community quickly before we finish up? I um, just thank you for tuning into this video and receiving the energies. And if you want a deeper activation with your soul, like I started doing with you today, you can get a private session or you can join us in the creation temple. We're doing that kind of work consistently to work with our soul energies. Uh, so you would want to join as a master creator or a supreme creator to get the in-person interaction or you could join as a sacred creator or a royal creator to get the energetics when uh, you can watch the replay of when I do those activations. Or like I said, you can do a personal session and get just that special one-on-one -on -one connection. And you'll find the personal sessions on suzybeiler.com slash services. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. So, yes, yeah, so, so check out the links below. Everything will be linked up to all Susie's um, service, everything she offers us and so i'm gonna have to so, so 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 just quickly this this call you're doing this is this saturday so what so what date would that be it's october 5th october 5th so that means yeah. i've got to get this video edited and out <laughs> by <laughs> <next> thursday <laughs> so i'll try my best to get it out in plenty of time so we can get some people on the call if, if you'd like yeah that'd be great thank you thank you trinity yeah, so if all syncs up, um, join me and Susie Byler, Baylor? Byler. Byler. Join me and Susie Byler on, um, on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Um, see you in another episode of The Trinity Show and um, hope you enjoyed this. So thank you, Susie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, God. Thank you. <laughs>